Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from the Realm of Darkness. As you can see here, Union Cross is not in, in a particularly good state right now, especially with more and more people looking to jump ship now that Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out this month. But, at the very least, there was some news that I kind of wanted to cover, partially because of the fact that I feel like no one else, I haven't really seen anybody else cover this topic yet, at least not in the video, so I figured I might as well go ahead and, uh, you know, make a video about it. It's also partially because of the fact that I've been wanting to cover news like this for quite a long time now, and I figure I might as well start now because, you know, why not? There's not too much going on in Unicross anyway, so hey, whatever. But yeah, just for reference, the information I'm going to be presenting you guys for this video does come from the article from KH Insider. So if you want the full details about uh, everything I'm going to be talking about in here, please go ahead and check out the article. I'll be leaving it in the description and comments down below. Uh, but I'll just be kind of giving the little snippets, highlights uh, that was covered in the article that I think you might, you guys might enjoy hearing about. But yeah, as this basically is shown like in the title of this video and such, uh, essentially, Kingdom Hearts 3 would not even really have been made or even existed if it weren't for the fact that Pixar uh, was involved for Kingdom Hearts 3. And KH Insider actually quoted in their article that apparently Tetsuya Nomura said that after we were done with Kingdom Hearts 2 and we started to consider Kingdom Hearts 3, we started talks with Disney. I remember saying, if we can't use Pixar, then we can't have a third game. To, ha to be able to say something like that to a big corporation like Disney, I don't know. To me, I feel like that takes that takes some real balls. So I I I applaud you, Tetsuya Nomura, because I believe we all know how much the entire Kingdom Hearts community has been wanting, at the very least, Toy Story to be within the Kingdom Hearts franchise in general as a whole. Nomura was literally not kidding around, and oh. I cannot be happier about it. But apparently, because of the fact that Nomura didn't really want to make Kingdom Hearts 3 without Pixar, and especially Toy Story, it actually took them a very long time for them to actually get, like, approval from Disney and Pixar. And it was mainly towards the uh, story and character designs involved with the game. Because I'm pretty sure that you guys know that Disney, Disney tends to be very, very picky about what they share with other people uh, and this is not just with towards Square Enix this is just like in general like they're just very picky about their brand and how it comes across because you know it is Disney they want to be the happiest you know place on earth and everything their, their brand is literally supposed to be like you know happiness so they want to avoid anything that could tarnish their brand in any way shape or form even a smudge is like the end of the world for them that's a little dramatic but that's basically how it comes across to me so the fact that it took them so long just to like you know finalize the story and designs and stuff like that i'm not too surprised about that even though you know kingdom hearts is practically a large portion of disney within the game and stuff um even though how closely associated the game is with the Disney brand and such. Disney was still very selective about what they chose to even share with Square Enix uh, to the point where like they wouldn't even give them like full data <laughs> on how to make a lot of like the characters and stuff like that. And in the past for previous Kingdom Hearts games and stuff, they essentially just had to reference the movies and such and recreate the characters and everything from scratch just based off you know what they could find in the movies and everything. Uh, and even now according to KH Insider, apparently like Square Enix will only receive the basic like polygon shapes of the characters and in case you don't know what that is like um, the same way how a an artist would start off drawing a character with like a circle before adding more lines to turn into a face adding a nose to make it a you know facial features and stuff like that and then slowly adding hair eye lines you know all that good stuff to overall create the finished you know product and look and stuff like that uh, the polygon shape is literally just giving them the, the, you know, the circle outline of the body and then nothing else. And that might be overly simplistic, but that's, that's more or less kind of like how it is. So you can imagine how much pressure is put onto Square Enix, uh, because the fact that they're, ba they're basically given the most basic amount of data, have to recreate it, but on top of being only given basic data, they also are, have to meet Disney's high expectations to essentially 
make the characters and everything related to the characters absolutely perfect. Like, I'm not even a game designer. I have friends who are game designers, uh, but I'm not even a game designer. And like, I can only imagine just how much stress and pressure that must be for any of the staff over at Square Enix. So like, it's a huge round of applause to them for, you know, being able to like achieve that. Like, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, you can only imagine though, that because of the fact of like how much effort had to go into to making sure that everything looked absolutely perfect though, there had to have been some level of communication involved in order to make sure everything was, you know, pinpoint perfect. Uh, and according to the article, Square Enix and Disney held weekly teleconferences to keep communication about the project open. This resulted in a back and forth until both companies were happy with the final product. This just makes sense. If I had someone else working on something associated with my brand, I would want to make sure it meets my expectations too. So that just makes sense. It's also because of how much communication was involved necessary in order to make Kingdom Hearts 3 such a reality. Square Enix even had access or at least knowledge of future Disney titles at the time when they, you know, they were speaking with Disney about making the game um, back, you know, around the 2012 type time period. Uh, before movies like Big Hero 6 and stuff came out. I think I think that was before Big Hero 6 came out. But because of how big of the project it was, they had to essentially lay out what all of the playable wor worlds were going to be within the game before they even started making the game, um, or let alone the story, I think, too. So Disney and Pixar were able to give them information about all of the future worlds and stuff, uh, at least in that regard, which is pretty cool when you think about it. Now, it's very possible that among this list of uh, future titles and stuff that Disney presented to Square Enix, uh, a large portion of them just didn't make it into the game. Um, and of course, we haven't received any news from, you know, Square Enix or Tetsuya Nomura in regards as to what future uh, Disney titles and such could appear in future Kingdom Hearts games or whatnot. And Nomura actually made a statement about that. He even quotes, It doesn't really matter to me whether or not they're going to be popular. It's just about whether the game is going to benefit from adding them. In past Kingdom Hearts games, we've included a number of more minor titles. It's not only about what's interesting, it's also about variety. Of course, even after that fixed point when we have decided what the worlds are going to be, occasionally there are Disney things that comes up with afterwards. And I'm like, ah, I wish I could put that in there. Now, despite how picky Disney tends to be about, you know, their brand and their titles and stuff like that, um, you would think that they would be the ones to rush or pressure Square Enix in any way, shape, or form in order to help uh, get Kingdom Hearts 3 to become possible. Uh, it was actually the opposite. Even though they were super specific about everything related to them uh, involved in the game, they actually didn't really push any pressure on them at all whatsoever and a majority of the pressure actually came from the development development team themselves <laughs> which kind of makes sense to me uh just because of the fact of like we haven't really received a kingdom hearts game a legitimate kingdom hearts title in in, in a while okay uh especially not a mainline title to the series from everything I can gather, the development team is very passionate about Kingdom Hearts themselves, so they want it to be absolutely perfect about it. Um, the fans, of course, have been waiting for this game for the longest amount of time. Heck, we never even thought this game was actually going to even be a thing until they announced it many years ago, uh, which finally made us like, oh my god, it's actually going to be possible. So, of course, just from a fan's perspective, we have high expectations for it to be absolutely perfect. And, of course, Disney being Disney, they want it to be perfect as well to help, you know, make their brand look good. So, overall, there was a lot of pressure <laughs> on Square Enix uh, to make sure that everything looked absolutely picture perfect. And at least from what we can tell from watching the tra trailers and stuff like that, they... I have no doubt in my mind, they, they've done a fantastic, they've gone above and beyond what we've expected as fans, or at least me anyways. Like the amount of detail that they put into the worlds and the, tr and the characters and stuff, just to make them look literally like they stripped them straight from the movies themselves, to me, that's something I've just never seen done before in any video game at all whatsoever. And to be able to see that actually done for like, I don't know, to me, that's like a dream come true, especially how like near and dear to my heart this this franchise is. So I'm happy. <laughs> but other than that, that was it for today, guys. I would love to hear what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. I'm looking to try to make these kind of news type update videos more often if possible. 
But other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys. So, yeah. That's the end of the video. I think you should, uh, you should totally smash that subscribe button right there. As well as check out any one of those future, those past videos on the side too. Just saying.